Sanjay, I think I speak on behalf of everyone in the room. We are so happy you and your company are so big in Virginia. And welcome. Uh, we hope you spend some more time here. Great to be here. <laughs> Thank you. So how did it happen? How do you, you're a co-founder of this great company called SanDisk, and I have to help you, the, the Sanjay and the SanDisk, there's a sign that just coincidence, or did that just, and how'd you go from SanDisk to, to Micron? From um, SanDisk, co-founded it in 1988, actually a great story, three immigrants in the US, one from China, one from Israel, and this one from India, co-founded the company in 1988, at that time flash memory technology was in the labs, and we knew that it will get big, but we never imagined that it will become as big as it has become today. And it was an amazing journey, rewarding journey from 1988 until 2016, when the company was sold to Western Digital Corporation. For a period of a year, I thought, you know, I'm probably going to be exploring some different venues in life and took some time off. And then my, when Micron approached me, I thought that was really an exciting opportunity because I really considered Micron like a national treasure. Micron, 40-year-old company with tremendous innovation capabilities. I consider it to be the company that has the most comprehensive portfolio of technologies in the world for memory and storage with its portfolio of DRAM, flash, and emerging technologies such as 3D Crosspoint, and really a great team. So that, uh, you know, national treasure, iconic company, tremendous opportunity ahead, especially in the world today where data is really big. I mean, everything is all about data. The future is going to be shaped by data, and that data lives in the kind of products that Micron makes. So really, really exciting opportunity, I think, for Micron as a company, and I'm humbled and honored to be leading this amazing company here and joined it in 2017. That's great. So you've had a, an amazing career. It's not over. It's, 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 it's just, it just continues to accelerate, and you've had a bird's eye view of trends in technology. What, do you, what have you seen as the big trends and are, will there be the big trends in terms of the underlying technologies going forward? You know, when you look at today, it's really about connectivity, fast connectivity, 5G that's coming up that's just starting to get launched, and I think it's going to drive tremendous growth in the years ahead, many years ahead. It's not just about 5G giving you better experience in smartphone devices, but it's really about machine-to-machine -machine connectivity, fast connectivity, connectivity of variety of devices at the edge, IoT devices, which will really spawn as a result of this fast connectivity. They will be very intelligent devices, such as smart homes, smart cities, and of course, more and more intelligent and uh, attractive use cases of smartphones, uh, surveillance cameras, and in uh, smart factories, devices, and machines that will be all connected together. And then all of this connecting with the cloud, really to make experiences richer for consumers and unleashing new business models based on all the value of data that will be through the cloud, through these intelligent devices. And then ultimately the trend of artificial intelligence. I think this we are seeing very much just the tip of the iceberg. And artificial intelligence technologies have been around for 50 years plus. The algorithms have existed 50 years plus, but it's just that the compute capability the data storage, the data access capability had not advanced to the levels where vast amounts of data could be analyzed fast. Now that day has come. Now the technologies in terms of compute capability, in terms of what we make at Micron, in terms of memory and storage solutions where data resides, where data is accessed fast, where data is manipulated, is processed, it, this has all come to a level where these solutions are becoming possible th through the advances in technology, through the advances in compute capability, through the advances in data and memory storage capability. So artificial intelligence will be a huge driver going forward. All this data that tens of billions of devices around the globe will be collecting that data will be, a lot of it will be processed, a lot of insights will be drawn 
from that data using artificial intelligence algorithms. And the future is going to be, I believe, very, very exciting. You know, one of the applications is about autonomous vehicles. We just heard earlier, June 13th, you have here, you know, uh, uh, autonomous vehicle uh, technology, uh, technology symposium of the future. These are the kind of things that will absolutely shape our world. And what Micron is excited about is, this is all about data. The world is going to be shaped by data, and that data really needs the kind of products that Micron makes. Um, and that's very, very exciting, huge growth opportunity for us. So what will we be able to do five years from now that we can't do today? Five years from now, I'm very sure that we probably can't even imagine some of the things that would be possible. I always like to say that in 2010, iPad got introduced, and who would have thought before 2010 that iPad was going to get introduced and tablets, etc., have become a way of life today. Five years from now, you know, definitely you're going to be seeing, um, you know, more and more autonomous features in your vehicles. You know, perhaps first autonomous vehicles will start coming out on the roads, you know, robo taxis, you know, five to ten year time frame from now. Certainly, with respect to our memory technology, th this will become more and more important part of some of these applications. 5G, as I said earlier, definitely five years from now, this will be prevalent all across the globe, and the fast connectivity, the low latency, the high bandwidth connections that it will provide, it absolutely would have changed our world. We will be able to download 8K movies on our smart devices in a matter of seconds, and you will have basically very powerful, very intelligent devices all around you, in your pocket, in your home. You know, th there'll be even m advances in medical fields that will really be happening faster than we can imagine that will be leveraging all these trends of fast connectivity, data, and ability to really mine that data to solve some of the biggest unsolved problems of the world. Well, sometimes where a company locates reflects uh, a favorable view of its policies. Uh, Micron and Amazon have chosen to locate huge facilities in Virginia. What is it about Virginia that you find attractive for doing business? So first of all, let me tell you, the facility that we are involved with uh, at Micron, that Micron owns here in Virginia, actually has existed for more than 20 years. And Micron has been in this facility for 17 years now. So we have been here long time and very, very proud of our presence here in Manassas, Virginia, and a team of 1,300 uh, that really is a powerful force driving the growth of Micron here. Um, and what we like about uh, our presence here is Tremendous team first, great capability, great talent, um, and we have enjoyed that talent pool over the course of last 17 years. And as we look at that expansion that you heard about earlier, over the course of next 10 years, investing another $3 billion into the facilities here, adding another 1,100 jobs over the course of next 10 years. By the way, uh, about 160 of those jobs have already been hired although we launched that expansion only August of last year. And as the construction is going on, there's another 500 contractors already hired there. So availability of talent, availability of resources, a great infrastructure here in the city, uh, and above all, a strong presence of the university system that's always important to continue to support the pipeline of top talent, and that is available to us here. All of that, as well as the support that we have received from the Commonwealth of Virginia, all of these really make it absolutely an ongoing, attractive value proposition for Micron to be an important player here. I believe we are among the top six in terms of employment uh, among the companies here. And also, I, I believe you're vying for first as to the number one exporter in Virginia. It's either you or soybeans. Uh, that is right. Dollar, I right? believe we have been number one exporter, and sometimes one, sometimes number two, but ab absolutely, and that's based on all the chips that we produce here. Well, that's quite a stirring endorsement. Uh, that's a great endorsement of Virginia, but I can't help resist. If there was one specific government policy you would change in Virginia, what would it be? 
you know, we, we have got good support. I mean, we just started this expansion and I have to thank, uh, you know, the government officials here. And we are happy with our presence here. And of course, you know, we want to make sure that the ecosystem is well supported in terms of not only supporting Micron, but supporting the education, supporting the STEM education, increasing the pipeline, and bringing about more diversity and inclusion in the workforce population here, especially in the field of technology. I think these are all the things that already are being worked upon. We all can always do more in these areas. And uh, so this, our center here um, in Manassas, Virginia, is a fab that manufactures our wafers for what we call long life cycle products. And these long life cycle products go into end market applications such as automotive, such as industrial applications, as well as networking markets. And uh, we, this is our center. As I mentioned earlier, we have centers, manufacturing plants, R&D uh, capabilities all across the globe, in Japan, in Taiwan, in uh, Singapore, in China, uh, and uh, other U.S. and other places. But this one here is the one primarily targeted for long life cycle products. So when you think of, you know, in the future, there is going to be tremendous growth in the automobile market, autonomous vehicles. More and more autonomous features are already becoming available in the vehicles, and they will come, as we discussed earlier, that autonomous vehicles will be on the roads. Those kind of products, the memory, and those vehicles, by the way, will have many sensors on them, and they will be like data centers on wheels. They will have more than a terabyte of storage inside the car, and more than 100 gigabyte of DRAM inside the car. So that's like a data center inside the car because those cars will have to be making split second, thousands of decisions within a second in, in order to really make sure that you have a safe and comfortable and efficient uh, you know, ride experience in the car. So all that data will have to be accessed and processed within the car and of course connectivity with the cloud will be important as well. These kind of solutions will be provided from this site here, going toward automotive applications. And I really want to point out that in automotive, as you know, none of us ever want to be inside a car where anything fails because of electronics. And low, God forbid anything happens to an autonomous vehicle of the future because of electronics failure, because of any memory or storage that is in that device, we never want that to fail. It really has to be absolutely a culture of zero failures, right? That's extremely important. And that's where I'm very proud that our site here in Manassas actually has been recognized for producing top quality. We are number one market share leader in the automotive market today. So well positioned for driving that growth for the future from this site as well. And we are number one market share leader in that automotive market today, which is very, very demanding from a quality point of view because we have a very strong team, very strong culture of having, producing highest quality products here. So this center, very proud of its quality record and I think that bodes very well for driving growth in the future for, for you know, markets like autonomous vehicles. I, but I want to point out that, of course, it's about our presence here, but we have very large manufacturing and R&D capability across the world. We are 34,000 people worldwide. We have 1,300 of them here, but all the rest are at all these many other locations. That's all this combined is what produces, you know, billions and billions of gigabytes of DRAM and flash memory that ultimately leads to 30.4 billion of revenue in fiscal year 18, making us the fourth largest semiconductor company in the world and the second largest semiconductor company in the US. So really it's our global network of R&D capability, manufacturing capability, a very strong team, and our leadership through innovation in memory and storage technologies that have positioned Micron very well to really capture the opportunities that will be presented by the data-driven economy of the future. That's a terrific presentation on that. But let me put it just in, in terms of that I'm trying to understand. So I'm in my self-driving car. A dog runs across the road. 
it's a few feet from my car, and it's about to hit the car. What is the tech, what is the back and forth and decision making that has to happen using your I mean, a lot of back and forth that has to happen. I mean, of course, there have to be sensors and cameras that have to detect the motion of that dog, that have to recognize that, I mean, a dog or a child or, you know, uh, or another vehicle. I mean, all, it has to recognize all of that. It has to then make decisions. What is the distance between the car and, you know, that object? Uh, what speed the car is going at? And how quickly it can stop, what it has to do, you know. So a lot of these kind of decisions absolutely and, and have to be made. How you long know, would and, that take? And eventually, I mean, even today, humans, we humans as drivers have to make those decisions. And these machines will have to have more intelligence and greater speed of making the decision and reaction to be able to avoid any kind of accident. So how fast will that, that occur? Will it be faster than humans can do it now? These are the things technologies are being worked upon, right? I mean, as you can see, you know, again, I mean, if it was already happening, these cars would be on the roads today, right? But these are absolutely being worked upon. And I do believe the capability exists, but does it exist in every case? I don't know. I mean, you know, I'm not, we are providing the memory and storage solutions to these companies that are working on these kind of algorithms. And as you know, there are many autonomous vehicles that are on the road. I was actually in China just last month. I visited Baidu, and Baidu is a leader in China in autonomous vehicles. And I actually rode in their autonomous vehicle, rode around their campus, so it was a relatively safe environment, but it was pretty mind-boggling, and you know, that thing had, as I mentioned earlier, a terabyte of SSDs, you know, the kind of products we make, and uh, more than 100 gigabytes of DRAM, again, the kind of products we make, all in the boot, the trunk of the car, you know. And, you know, and they did try to create situations where there would be objects in front of the car, and the car was handling it pretty well. But, of course, maybe some of, us, some of it was planted, so I don't know. But, um, you know, what they say is that autonomous cars will save about a million human lives in the future. And of course, it's not going to be perfect. Of course, there will be some accidents. But the opportunity of what they will mean for human life, and just think about you know, for handicapped people or for elderly people, that ability, that mobility that those vehicles will provide will be a pretty powerful experience. And like any technology, these things will evolve over time. And it will have some bugs early on, but over time, these things will get better. Well said.